Bisley lies on the route that would have been taken by the Benedictine monks between Chertsey Abbey and Waverley Abbey in Farnham at the end of the 10th century. Close to the Church of St John the Baptist, along this connecting footpath that extends to the lane opposite Clues Farm, lies a spring known as St John the Baptist Well. This dependable supply of drinking water would have been the halfway point on this ancient byway and is believed to be the reason for the establishment of the original Bisley Church some time prior to 956 AD. Until undertaking the current restoration programme, this incongruous slab of concrete that was cast in situ has been covering this nationally Grade II listed hole in the ground for the past 50 years or so. Interestingly, the water discharging from this source has never been known to run dry or freeze up in living memory and is still drawn for baptisms. In preparation for the planned well refurbishment, several conceptual designs were produced in the 1990s, but by popular demand, a system incorporating an open top with safety grill was finally approved by the authorities. Oh dear, not a good day to start work, but then we were going to get pretty wet and muddy in clearing the ditches. Raising the slab to find out what we were dealing with was the first objective. We're actually looking at the top of the surface of the water. Yeah. And we had to find out how deep it is for our... I've got blocks under all round. I want them on the stick. Yum yum. And it's slurry now. Oh, they just slurry right. deep. Right. <laughs> there are longs up there, Ron. So we went down about 11 feet. Prior to any grill fabrication, it was necessary to check the well's diameter. Three foot diameter. Three foot diameter. Well, that's the end of stage one, so we'd better get packing. One year later, and having drawn up detailed plans, work starts in earnest to fabricate a stainless steel grid with John's help. Before work on the well can commence, it is necessary to reduce the height of the water overflow. Yeah. That bag is out of it's, it's working because it's the amount coming through there is more than stopped more than coming through. If that stopped flowing, that's big enough, isn't it? A week later, we are back on site with the heavy gun. Removing the concrete slab, which covers the well, needs the lifting power of this tractor. As access to the well is only normally possible via a narrow footpath, we needed permission of Dr Heaney, the landowner of the adjacent field, to approach from another angle. Making the way clear necessitated the cutting down of a number of saplings. We also had to dismantle this barbed wire fence. As branches of the oak tree next to the well were going to hinder access for the lifting operation, some severe pruning was necessary. The bucket on the tractor was particularly useful in this instance. We were now clear for the lift to begin. Chain underneath. 
That's it. That's it. Right. Okay, sorry, can we do it the other way? Without much trouble, the top was off, and the well exposed for the first time after many decades. With the generator powered up, the power tool was soon in action, removing the top layers of stone. The exposed surface was now ready to receive the grill. It was all looking good so far. Cutouts in the stone were now needed to securely locate the grill and to ensure it would lie level just below the water surface. This water for a cup of tea, Ron. <laughs> right, two men watch, one man do. That's it. Yep. So, where did these stones come from, then, Tim? Um, <laughs> I bought 12 tons of them um, to do path edging at home, and um, I felt with 12 tons I could spare a few for the well. <laughs> mm. Clean cut. Work, work back to the end, I should. Yes, that's it. It's the Ron's Bradbury design. Magnificent. The hard work you you all put in, especially this young man here. Oh, Ron's done most of the work. I know. Yeah. You look at the. Oh yes, it's dried on your mouth. Oh. Gordon, as foreman and recorder of these events, inspects the handiwork following a drying out period. Two weeks later, more volunteers were recruited to clear the surrounding shrubbery. Whilst this progressed, others pressed on with building the final layers of the stone top. The new water spout was now suitably positioned so that the water surface would hide the presence of the grill. This trough is to be positioned to catch the waterfall from the spout to minimise any long-term water erosion. The following summer of 2003, we were back to do the finishing touches. Providing a set of steps leading to the water draw-off point would obviously avoid clambering down the bank and any fear of slipping. It's like building a dry stone wall. It looks beautiful on the outside, but you, see, you can see the rubbish they put in the middle. <laughs> The final task was to sink a substantial post into the ground to display an information notice. 
Avoiding underground tree route was easier said than done. Hole number 10. Hole number 10, success. <laughs> yes, well done. Right on the edge of a route. It's on the edge, but if I can see where it is, I'll try to come to one side of it. And that's hit a route right at the bottom, but it doesn't matter now, because we're down as far as we need. it. Easy. I've never seen a tool like it before. So how long have you had that then Tim? Uh, oh, ten years. It, uh, I bought it in the market. I never regretted it. At least there is a route down there. One, two, three, four. Barely two feet. Yes, it's hole number 11 now. That's superb, well done Tim. How's that? At last, a permanent record for those passing to see and learn about this historic site.